Okay, um, I'm Brian Model. I'm the uh, chief of the fluid physics and transport branch up at, uh, at Glenn Research Center in Cleveland. And before I get started, I just want to make one comment to the first question uh, that the gentleman asked about um, whether you can orientate the, uh, uh, your hardware uh, to uh, uh, minimize the effects of gravity. Uh, we, I don't think we necessarily do that on station, but what you can do, and we do this in fluid physics and a lot of our experiments, is we request that we operate during quiescent time periods. So that's how we get around that. We, we actually know when they're going to do something which would create a disturbance in a direction or a frequency that's gonna bother us. And we make sure that we don't operate uh, during that time period. And sometimes that's, uh, that's difficult to, to schedule, but uh, that's how we address that. Um, okay, uh, my, my branch uh, supports the implementation of NASA-funded ISS research projects uh, related to fluid physics. Um, and we come on board in the very earliest stages after NASA's selected a PI. <clears throat> We're usually the first, uh, you know, after NASA's award, made, headquarters has made that award, uh, we are the first and only contact with the PA, PI uh, during the ground-based development where we're looking at feasibility issues. We help the PIs develop um, uh, their initial science requirements, which then evolve into engineering requirements, which are handed over to, uh, to the engineering team to build flight hardware. Uh, and we stay with the PI all the way up through cradle to grave sort of thing, uh, up to uh, operation on orbit. Uh, we sit on console with the PIs, we support them in data analysis uh, if needed, and uh, revising test matrix and that sort of thing. Uh, we do also serve the PI function, uh, but we have to compete, you know, in our branch, uh, we have to compete uh, uh, with the external community uh, uh, to, to become a PI. Uh, next chart, please. So, um, fluid physics, um, I, I uh, every fall I teach a, a graduate level transport phenomena class uh, at Cleveland State University and I spend the first half of the lecture talking about what, what is fluid physics and what do we mean by transport phenomena. Uh, and I get a lot of interesting answers from the students. But uh, in, in very short, you know, fluid physics is a study of the motions of liquids and gases and then the associated transport of mass, momentum, and energy, and it's different from other areas of study like thermodynamics where you're looking at end states. Uh, we're interested in how we get from one state to the other. Um, these studies arise in nature. Uh, I list a few there, uh, meteorology, oceanography, and of course living plants and animals. You heard a lot about that in this morning's uh, talks. And then in technology developments, biological, biochemical, chemical petroleum, material processing, and then, of course, the uh, mechanical uh, uh, fluid systems, the more traditional. Um, there's been a need for a better understanding of fluid phenomena for, I mean, this has been a field of study for well over 100 years. Uh, it's a multidisciplinary research community. We constantly branch off and support other areas, such as biology. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, it's... The, the emergence of these new fields and relevance in both basic is relevant in both basic and applied sciences. Um, and the rest of my talk, I'm going to really talk about the two really key reasons we do research in, in zero g. Uh, one is uh, to uh, develop technologies uh, for NASA exploration, and the other is for terrestrial and fundamental science reasons. Uh, next chart, please. Um, so, you know, what's so special about fluid physics and zero-g? Well, I think you heard this morning uh, that, you know, uh, the short answer is you're, you're basically eliminating the conditions uh, that dominate in 1g so that you can start to look at intermolecular forces and other forces that are interacting and study those. Um, the, you know, what you're essentially eliminating is buoyancy and sedimentation between gas liquid or liquid solid phases. And you also have to worry about buoyancy-driven convection. Uh, in 1G, go to zero G, that, that's also eliminated and that's within a single phase. Um, next chart, please. Okay, um, so one of the primary reasons NASA uh, uh, conducts low gravity uh, research is to develop technologies for uh, both robotic and uh, uh, human missions. And the areas that are, and this isn't a complete list, but uh, these are some of the areas that we research that are directly related to fluid physics. Uh, we look, uh, we're looking to develop efficient heat transfer systems 
And these now are typically going to involve uh, phase change, both freeze-thaw uh, systems, phase change material heat exchangers, or boiling and condensation systems. Um, we're also starting to look at life support systems that involve two-phase. Uh, obviously, we have life support systems that function on ISS and have functioned on other uh, spacecraft, um, but they're predominantly single-phase systems. And the, the first um, uh, evolution of these systems, uh, we needed to be able to test them for months uh, in, in, uh, in a, what we were hoping was a, a relevant conditions. So we worked very hard, the engineers worked very hard to make sure that these were gravity independent systems, which basically drove you to single phase. The price we paid for that is we, we have less efficient systems, maybe not quite as reliable. And in some cases, uh, like in uh, chemical uh, reactors, we've, we've actually shown that we can take advantage of microgravity systems and actually operate more efficiently than the same system does in, uh, in 1G. Uh, other areas, chemical biological reactors, and another big area uh, that we're interested in is uh, a transfer and storage of fluids. Uh, NASA's very interested in developing a, an, a, a, a cryo depot on orbit, uh, and then a transfer of non-cryo fluids as well. And then finally, uh, gas liquid separation systems. Uh, next chart, please. Okay, so I mentioned the phase change material. Uh, our freeze-thaw systems, those are not very gravity dependent, so I didn't really put a chart together for that. But boiling condensation heat transfer systems are highly gravity dependent. And this little uh, blue chart depicts uh, uh, critical heat flux at, uh, at two different flow levels. Uh, and you can see how, how sensitive it is to orientation in 1G. Um, these uh, heat transfer problems in 0G you know, you have, to you have to consider not only the buoyancy between the two phases, but as I mentioned earlier, the, the convective buoyancy within a single phase. A uh, couple examples of research that we've been doing, uh, we, we actually just wrapped up last week uh, a constrained vapor bubble experiment, which is looking at a wickless heat pipe. Uh, it was a very successful um, experiment. We're hoping to launch uh, probably early next year a pool boiling facility, which will have two experiments on it, uh, where we'll look at various aspects. We have two PIs looking at various aspects of pool boiling. And then in about five or six years, uh, we just kicked off another experiment that's going to look at flow boiling and condensation. Um, we're actually going to start funding that in um, next fiscal year. Uh, the reason we need, we're so concerned or so interested in, in this type of heat transfer is that we expect, you know, with the more uh, dense uh, compact electronics, high energy uh, electronics, we're almost going to be forced to go to this type of, uh, of a heat transfer or heat removal system. And if we look at nuclear power systems, um, uh, we're, we're, we're absolutely forced to go to uh, uh, this type of a heat transfer system. Uh, next chart, please. Okay, and then there's gas liquid uh, uh, phase distribution without heat transfer. Uh, I show two uh, uh, pictures here, uh, uh, one of flow through a pipe, and the differences uh, in the very top uh, is uh, two phases in 1G, and that same flow conditions in 0G. So you see you get a very different uh, distribution of uh, and, and operation of that system, distribution of phases. Um, these are, these are most commonly found in propulsion and life support systems. And then, of course, the, uh, you know, transfer, uh, a very critical uh, uh, area, uh, you know, uh, technology you want to develop are efficient, low-mass systems for transferring uh, liquid from tanks uh, in zero-G. Um, we, we obviously are able to do that. Uh, we, you know, the, the current systems usually involve uh, veins and, and screens, but they're essentially designed to bring fluid in contact with, uh, with the section that you're going to start removing the fluid um, just for the initial drawdown of the fluid. Uh, we really don't have any good system or good way to completely draw the tank down without the introduction of artificial gravity. So essentially, you know, the fuel tanks nowadays, we, we start flowing liquid to the, to the thruster, and then we fire the thruster, we get the artificial gravity, and we can completely drain the, the tank. Well, obviously, if you're trying to do an on-orbit fuel uh, transfer, uh, and you don't have to fire thrusters or any other uh, uh, artificial acceleration, uh, that's, that's a real advantage. 
Um, next chart. Okay, multi-phase uh, reactors, uh, uh, both chemical and biological. Uh, we are we're, we're currently um, uh, working on a, uh, uh, a the development of uh, of a fixed bed reactor. Uh, we're hoping to fly it in about uh, three years. Uh, some of the things that we that we're interested in are startups and transient. And this reactor bed will have uh, fixed solid particles and then a gas and liquid phase flowing through it. Uh, we're interested in the effects of wetting and non-wetting uh, uh, packing material. Uh, we've, we've done aircraft tests that have shown that we, uh, we clearly get different pressure drops, uh, uh, primarily because of the shift in liquid holdup. Liquid holdup is the final thing we want to look at, and that's very critical because that's, uh, uh, you need that to understand the mass transfer, predict the mass transfer, um, and, uh, uh, you know, that's very different in zero-G. Next chart, please. Okay, gas-liquid separation devices. We obviously can separate gas-liquid phases in zero-G, but it's uh, through uh, mechanical means, uh, pumps, uh, uh, centrifugal, that sort of thing. What we're looking now is to develop systems uh, that are more passive, that don't require uh, power and or the mass and are more reliable. Uh, one particular system that we're hoping to fly uh, in another three or four years is one that, that takes advantage of the momentum of the, of the two fluids. And you can see that under the reduced gravity bubble vortex, we can actually uh, uh, swirl the fluid, get the phases to, uh, uh, to separate or partially separate without adding any, uh, any additional power. Um, okay, next chart, please. Okay, so equally important to developing needs for, for uh, NASA technologies uh, is to use the ISS uh, uh, platform as a test bed for terrestrial applications and uh, fundamental science. And some of the areas, and again, this is not a complete list, include interfacial capillary phenomena, although that overlaps um, with, uh, uh, with uh, NASA applications as well, coalescence and aggregation, granular flows, electrostatics of granular materials, colloidal systems, and then other uh, non-Newtonian fluids. Uh, next chart, please. Okay, interfacial and capillary phenomena. We've, uh, we've conducted uh, uh, several experiments in this area over the years. Uh, we currently have a USPI uh, Mark Wise logo who's uh, looking at new geometries and trying to develop, uh, he has been developing a more fundamental understanding of capillary effects. Uh, uh, in these various geometries. Um, he's actually was just flying, uh, 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 is, is currently flying an experiment now. Um, we also have uh, a joint effort with, uh, we're working with the German Space Agency, DLR, to uh, look at uh, uh, flow through an open channel. And this is really critical in removing a liquid uh, from a tank. If you have an open interface, there's a maximum uh, uh, amount of liquid you can you can draw uh, through that channel before you get that interface to collapse and you start to ingest bubbles. Uh, so they're they're that's one of the primary reasons they're uh, they're hoping to fly their experiment. Uh, next chart, please. Okay, coalescence and aggregation. Um, there's a number of uh, important processes that rely heavily on uh, on the uh, coalescence and aggregation of dispersed phases. Uh, there's examples, many examples in sol solids and liquids or liquid drops and gas and so forth. Um, understanding uh, the mechanisms and controlling them to either enhance or inhibit coalescence is very important. Um, and only in zero G can you really observe um, these other forces and they're primarily intermolecular forces. Uh, next chart, please. Granular mechanics and flows. We had a, a ISS experiment, uh, was under development until uh, it was a casualty of our budget cuts about four or five years ago. But uh, this is a very important area. It supports a wide range of in industries, uh, some estimates that industries uh, equal to a trillion dollars a year. I list all of them there in that first bullet. Um, but really, uh, you know, there's some fundamental forces that, uh, that are at play with granular material that you can only observe in zero G and we're hoping to, uh, to get this area of research uh, going again. Um, next chart. And 
I think I had a movie in there that's not going to play. Uh, okay, electrostatics of granular materials. This is, uh, you know, think of removing particles, dust particles, filters. Uh, we're, we're looking at, um, you know, preventing dust uh, contamination on spacesuits and other uh, hardware that, that uh, do extra uh, terrestrial um, missions. Uh, this is also important in laser and printing processes and applying pesticides and herbicides to uh, uh, crops. Uh, next chart, please. Colloids. Um, there's a number of experiments that, that have flown on both the shuttle and ISS on colloidal systems. Um, the, and there's many reasons to study these systems. Uh, there, I, I list a couple here. Uh, Matt Lynch, who's a co-I from Procter & Gamble, is currently uh, conducting research with us. He's interested, as an example, um, in predicting shelf life for soaps and pharmaceuticals and, and other colloidal um, fluids that, uh, that Procter & Gamble are interested in. And he's hoping that, uh, you know, to understand what leads to collapse or the irreversible phase separation of these systems. Uh, anybody's interested in seeing that, uh, send me an email and I can point you to, the, uh, to a link where you can, you can see that and there's actually more information on this. Um, okay, next chart. Okay, so finally, other non-Newtonian fluids. Uh, just list a couple here. Foams, which is also very important in industry. Uh, and uh, MR fluids, which is a class of fluids that where if you, uh, uh, you apply a magnetic field across them, you can, uh, you change the viscosity, you can get them all the way up to essentially solid-like behavior. Uh, and we le recently concluded uh, a couple experiments uh, in, that, in that field. Next chart, please. Okay, the last three or four charts um, I thought I'd throw out. Uh, these have bounced around the, the halls of NASA for five, six years now. Uh, there was an NRC report that was released in 2003. It's available to the public, uh, where they were trying to, um, were in this report, they plotted the magnitude of the impact of various uh, high priority areas of research versus the probability of success. So what I did is I highlighted the fluid physics. Uh, these are the physical science areas, but the, the ones I highlighted are, 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 are very much uh, uh, dependent on, on understanding fluid physics. And uh, these aren't listed in any particular order, but if you go to the next slide, you'll see the first chart where they basically plot, um, again, the magnitude of the impact versus the probability of success. And this is for an impact on science and the fundamental knowledge. And what jumps out in the far upper right is where you want to invest your research dollars because you can get you, both, a, both an impact and you have a high probability of success. So NASA's looking at it, it's like, yeah, we should probably be funding those areas. Well, um, the key areas in fluid physics are the nucleation or boiling process and multi-phase flow systems. Uh, next chart, please. Um, and this one is uh, the, likely, the likely impact on terrestrial applications. And in here, what jumps out are, again, multi-phase flow and heat transfer systems and biofluid dynamics, areas in fluid physics that you would want to invest research dollars. Um, and then the third chart, next chart. And finally, this is uh, the impact on NASA technology needs. And what jumps out here for the fluid physicists is multi-phase flow, heat transfer, interfacial processes, and then complex fluid rheologies like liquid crystal displays. And I'll give a little plug for Dave here because uh, he's gonna talk about combustion next. You'll see 9, 10, and 11, which are way up there. Those all have to do with flammability and fire safety. So this particular panel thought that was very critical to NASA uh, to, to study that. Uh, next chart. And this is my final chart. And um, I guess, you know, the two takeaways uh, that I want to leave you with is, uh, you know, gravity does in fact mask a number of other forces that are at play in, in many different types of fluid uh, systems. And, um, you know, we have, a, we have had a number of successful experiments to date. Um, and in fact, we're, we're, you know, this has been a very busy year for us. Uh, we got the fluid integrator rack up and running and um, we're starting new, new pr uh, projects and we're uh, concluding a lot of projects. So it's been a very exciting, fun year for us. Um, but, uh, you know, there's a lot more work to be done. 
And now that ISS is complete, uh, you know, we really need to uh, do this in both in fluids and in all the other areas, uh, both in applied and fundamental areas of study. Any questions? Thank you.